Hey friends, it's Jennifer Herndon at jenniferherndon.com. In today's video, I am going to show you how to use the Anthology, Anthologize plugin, the WordPress plugin, to create a great looking ebook. Now, this is a perfect plugin to use if you um, are struggling to create your first product, you're not sure what kind of content to put into it, or you're not sure about the technical aspects of creating an ebook. Here you're going to take the content you already have on your blog, you're going to repurpose it into a great looking ebook. It is easy to do with the Anthologize plugin, just requires a little editing, and you are good to go. The other way that you can use this plugin really effectively is if you need to create a giveaway or an opt in offer and you want to do it quickly, it needs to get done now. Perfect thing to do here is repurpose some content using the Anthologize plugin. You can do that in a day to create a kind of free offer or a giveaway book. So let's go on over to my blog and I'll show you how to use the Anthologize plugin to create a ebook and ebook. Um, here we are at the dashboard of my blog. You see here that I already have Anthologize installed, so it shows up here over here on the left hand side of my blog. If you don't have it installed, you probably don't or you wouldn't be watching this video. I'll show you how to do it real quick in case you are new to plugins. Go in to plugins here on the left hand side of your dashboard. Click on, click on plugins and add new. And it will bring up our install plugins page. What we're going to do then is just type in the box here the name of the plugin, Anthologize, and click enter or search plugins and it will find the plugin for you. You see here it pulls up Anthologize. It tells me I already have it installed. If I didn't, it would give me one of the Install Now buttons here. I can just click on that and um, it would be installed. Literally takes 20 seconds. It installs it, it asks you to activate it, and you are good to go. You will know it's activated when it shows up over here in your um, sidebar of your dashboard. So let's get started on our project. We're going to go to Anthologize and we're going to click on New Project so we can make a new project. Once you click on New Project, it's going to bring us over to the title page for our ebook called the title, the project title. Um, and of course, you know, you're going to have a well thought out, catchy uh, title here that I don't have. Um, so we'll make something up. And also, as you can see, you can have a subtitle, which you often do, so you can put that in too. And then put your name as the author and save project and you have taken the first step to creating your new ebook. Now after you click on save project it's going to bring us over here to the projects that we have. This is the one we just made, how to use video marketing in your business. We'll click on manage parts to get started with our new ebook. Once you click on manage parts it will take us to the template for making the ebook. What we've got here is here's where our chapters are going to appear. It calls them parts because you can name them anything you want. We're going to keep this like a book, so I'm going to call it chapters, but the freedom that the plugin gives you is to do anything you want with it. Over here on the left hand side, you've got all the posts that um, I have made on my blog ever. It starts with the most recent post and it goes all the way down to the beginning of time. You can also filter this um, if you want to. For example, on my blog, I do a lot of writing about personal development. So if I wanted to do a personal development book, I could go into, you can see you can either do tags, categories, dates, or post type. I could go into categories and I could look for all of the posts that were in the personal development that I had categorized in my blog as personal development. Brings up all of the categories you have. Click on personal development. And what you'll see here now is only posts that are in the personal development category. So that's a nice way if you know what you're going to write about. If you have a lot of content on your blog, like I've been uh, blogging on here since 2008, so I have quite a few posts. Um, so if you wanted to do that, that really cuts down the number of posts you have to look at and consider even putting in here. But we're going to go back to the default of all posts just for the purposes of this ebook. Now, another cool feature I want to show you before we get started is um, the import content feature. If you have another blog or a co-author that you want to work with, you can click on import content and you can bring in content from another um, blog or you know another any other source where you've got your content stored. It will take you 
to this import content page and all you have to do is enter the RSS feed URL of that blog or that other website and then um, click on go and that will automatically import all of the content from that blog unless you choose otherwise. You can unplug, uh, uncheck some of the um, posts and not have everything imported which is nice just to do select things if that's what you want to do. Anyway, for the purposes of our book, since I have plenty of content on my blog here, we're just going to use this. So let's get started creating our book. To create the book, we're going to click on New Part over here on the right-hand side. And that's going to bring us to where we're going to name our chapters. As you can see, you can call them anything, but I'm going to call them chapters. Chapter 1, um, using videos. I'm just making this up. Uh, and then click on Save Changes, and that will create the first chapter of our new ebook. And as you will see, this lets you create as many parts as you want to create. Let's just do, see we've got chapter one right there. Let's create another one just to make the, the demo a little bit better for you so I can show you a couple of different features here. Add a new part. Let's add chapter two. More video tips. Click on Save Changes, and we will see that Chapter 2 comes up. And our, whoops, click on Save Changes again. Chapter 2 will also show up as another part in our book. And obviously you can keep going as much as you want on this, but let's do this for our example. We're ready to add some content. Let's go over here and grab some posts that we've already decided we want to put in. You'll decide that beforehand. And it is literally as easy as drag and drop where you want them to go. And um, you can, if you change your mind, reorganize them at a later time. Um, there's a lot of flexibility here, a lot of room for changing your mind and making mistakes because it's completely a drag and drop system. So I'm just going to pull a few in here for you to give you an idea of how this works. I'd be able to drag and drop them in the right spot there. Come here. Okay. Now see if that's not really where I wanted that. If I wanted these two part one and part two posts to be together, then all I have to do is move that one up to the top. Easy as that. Now once you have all of your content in the drag and drop fashion over here in your chapters, you can edit and preview everything. As you see, everything has an edit and preview button next to it. So what you are going to want to do is, um, I, I don't I encourage you not to just drop your blog post in here, hit export and have a product because a blog post is different than an ebook and you're going to want to update your post to make them more current if need be and you're also going to want to put some some transition content in here because one post doesn't automatically transition for another in your writing. You may have authored these posts two years apart. Who knows? You want it to flow and sound like an ebook, not a thrown together collection of blog posts. So it will take some work to make this a really quality product, but you've got all your content right here. So if we want to, um, let's look at this post we've got in here and see if we want to edit it. Uh, maybe if there's some things that have changed or if we just think we want to provide a little more valuable content or like I said, if we want to transition into um, the next post. This brings up a very familiar looking box here, which is your WordPress um, editor or drafting box. And you see that you can do anything you want here. Um, I always put a picture over by the side of my blog post, which I'm probably not going to want to have those pictures in the same place because it's not going to make my book flow. I can delete that picture out of there. I can change what this heading says. I can do anything. Now, but, but don't freak out because you, I, I know you don't want to change your blog post. That's fine. Whatever you do here does not change your blog post. You can see you are in the edit anthologize library item. You're not in the edit your blog post. So you can make any changes here. And when you go back to the post on your blog, it's going to remain the original post like it was. And when you're finished doing whatever you need to do in here, you click on save changes. And that will take you back to our book. Now let me show you one more neat feature here that we have. When we have several posts in each chapter, which we probably will, it allows you to append one to the other because these posts are going to appear as chapter um, subheadings. 
So here I have part one and part two, which makes sense for a blog post, but doesn't really make sense for an ebook when you know they're going to flow right together one after another. So what I can do is click on append, and it'll ask me which of these I want to append it to. I want to append it to part one of this, so I click on it and hit append. And now you can see they've become one post. Now obviously that doesn't make sense to have part two in there, so once again we'll go in and edit and we'll see that we can change anything we want within the post and it will save. I could take out that picture or leave it. You'll have to do a preview and see um, what pictures you want in. You can move the pictures around. You can do whatever you want in here, which is why I love this plugin because you can make this into a real ebook, not something that looks like you've just thrown together a bunch of blog posts. So when we come back here and we've edited it, you see part two is gone. Okay, now let's say you've got all your content, you've edited, you've put in your transitions, you've done everything you want to do. You can go ahead and take a look at your project by hitting preview project up here. And what do we see? We see what um, this is, uh, what our ebook is going to look like for proofreading purposes. Now, see we have some things in here we don't want. I don't want my author box in there. I don't want the buffer button to appear in my ebook. That's going to look ridiculous. And that's why we're here in the preview mode, because we're seeing what needs to be edited. Now, you're also probably going to see a lot of little funny characters like the A's there or some short codes if you've used um, short codes in your drafting of your um, blog post. Don't worry about that because the short codes, that stuff's not going to show up when you do the final export, so don't worry about that. You can ignore that stuff. But let's look at what we do want to change. Um, now, obviously, I changed some of these pictures, but that's as easy as deleting. Let's look at what we do want to change here. We want to change, we want to take this buffer button out, and we want to take this out. So we'll close out that preview. How do we do that? Why are those things appearing there? They're appearing there because I have them installed as plugins on my blog. So you're going to want to go over to your plugins, look at your installed plugins, and you're going to want to deactivate those just for now. And then just remember to reactivate them after you're done. Okay, so I'm going to deactivate my author box, and I'm going to deactivate my buffer button. And this is simple. Don't worry about doing this. It doesn't erase them. It doesn't delete them. All it does is, is deactivate them for a moment, and you'll see then to reactivate them, all you do is click on activate, and it reactivates them. So this is not a big deal. But if we just do that for now, deactivate those for now, and go back and preview our project, project again. I hope I didn't need to refresh. Let's take a look here. We can see that those things are gone. Okay, we can see that we don't have, <coughs> excuse me, the buffer button in there. We don't have the um, uh, author bio boxes in there that we didn't want in there. Okay, so that's why you really need to look at this, go through this preview, see what you want, what you don't want, take out the pictures you don't want, um, you know, do everything you need to do to edit before you export your project. So that's just to give you a little tip there, not to get frustrated if you see stuff showing up you don't want showing up. It just means you need to go in and make the changes to your plugins and that stuff won't show up. Okay, so let's say now that we are ready to export our project. We're finished. We've got our book. It's ready to go. All we're going to have to do is hit export project and it will take us through the final stages of making our book. Now here's the book we're going to, one we're working on. We put the year, if you want to put you hold the copyright, whether it's Creative Commons or copyright edition authors, they're trying to give you the chance to make it look as much like a real book as you want to. Once you filled in that information, you just want to click on Next. And then it'll take you, again, the title of your book. What do you want the title to be? You could change it at that point if you want. You can write a dedication. You can write acknowledgments. And you can choose your export format. You can see it's in five different for formats that you can choose. I'm going to export mine to a PDF since we're making an ebook here. Click on Next. And gives us a couple more options here. You want the page to be letter or legal size, the type, the the height of the font, what font you want to use. Do you want a page break before the parts, a page break between the chapters? Yes, I do. Um, so, you know, you can make your choices here as to what you want. And then for the short codes and the little funny symbols that we've used in there, 
we're just going to hit disable here so that none of those are exported with our book. And then you can click on export and it is now busily making our project into a PDF book just as we requested. When it's finished, I see it appear down here if you're using a Mac, so will you. And you can open it up and take a look at what you have created here. Okay, and see here we've got our book. Let's make it a little bit bigger here for you. Well, maybe that wasn't such a good idea because um, you won't be able to see it as well. Take it on back. Here's the title of the book. Now here's the one thing that you will need to do. This is a cover page to your book. You don't want that to be the cover page to your book. So you're either going to want to um, hire somebody to make a cover page for you or make a nice looking cover page yourself. You can go to Fiverr and get somebody to make a nice one for you for $5. So don't worry about the expense of that. And you can um, load that right into there. Okay, and so after the title page, you see we've got our table of contents, chapter one and chapter two that we use, and the names of the posts that I left in there with the page numbers all looks exactly like a book. We've got it nicely formatted up here and it's exactly exactly how we previewed it to be. You can go through here and make sure that it everything looks exactly how you want it to look. If it doesn't, you can go back and make changes and re-export it. It is no big deal. Um, you can see it's divided the chapters here for us and there you have it. So I hope that um, this video tutorial has been helpful to you and that you will go out and take action and use the Anthologize plugin to make some kind of product for yourself. Repurposing your content is essential in your business. It's good for you. It's good for your customers. It helps you reach more people. And this is a great way to take a lot of the headache and hassle out of it. So I hope you've enjoyed this this video. If you have any questions, please make sure and let me know. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.